Fox, level at 10,000, about five south of St. Helens, we'll keep you informed. So we've got a continuation of the cave-in from the north and the west side. In the months before, Mount St. Helens hinted at her power. March 25th, climbers were warned of avalanches and earthquakes every five to 10 minutes. Snow cracked and slid down in rumbling sheets. All of a sudden, uh, I could see the plow and feel the truck shaking. And uh, it was quite a long tremor. I'd say it lasted 25 or 30 seconds. Over the next few weeks, KGW crews, known as News 8 then, slogged heavy cameras and huge tape decks through the spring snow to cover it. A few moments ago, we felt one of those strong earthquakes. We were sitting in our news car at about 9.05 in the morning. First a slow rocking motion, and then a few fast jolts, and then several aftershocks. Soon, roads were shut down. Volcanologists measured a growing bulge on the side of the mountain. Hundreds began evacuating the small towns and campgrounds around her peak. The Spirit Lake Boy Scout camp opened in 1955. Today, they abandoned the place indefinitely. The most famous person in all this, an old prohibition bootlegger turned innkeeper of Mount St. Helens Lodge, a man who wouldn't move his 16 cats and told national news crews at Spirit Lake he was staying with enough whiskey to ride it out. His legendary story and name graced Oregon school history classes from then on, 84-year-old Harry Truman. I'm not going to leave here because I'm the only one up here. There's nobody else lives up here in the wintertime. So it's just going to have to run Truman off this lake and I'm not going to go. As he waved so long to the sheriffs and news crews, the Northwest waited. It was May 15th. No one ever saw Harry Truman again. Now we've got an eruption down here. Now we got a big slide coming off. The slide is coming off of the west slope. So, uh, now we got a whole great big uh, eruption out of the uh, crater. And we got another that opened up on the west side. A whole west side, northwest side, the slide down. A Sunday morning, 832, the largest landslide ever recorded, blasted out at 130 miles per hour. A column rose 80,000 feet into the atmosphere. It would drift east for days, dropping ash in 11 states and Canada. This is a special report of the King Broadcasting Network, live from KGW News 8 in Portland, Oregon. Good evening, I'm Robin Chapman here with Ralph Wenge to report on the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Morton is less than 25 miles from the peak of Mount St. Helens as the ash flies. This is what the town looked like Sunday, that was during the volcano's heaving eruptions. We now have reports from, of heavy ash fallout from as far away as Butte, Montana. In northeastern Washington, there was so much ash that it was like night in the middle of the day. Drive down the road north of Rife Lake and north of the mountain and you may not be able to see the road. 200 homes, 47 bridges, 230 square miles of forest gone. Floods were triggered when hot flows of ash and cinders incinerated the forests and snowfields high on the north side of the volcano. A wall of water 25 feet high trapped helpless victims on high ground. Some have not been seen since the water roared through. 57 people were killed. When it blew, Spirit Lake's water displaced into a wave said to be 600 feet high. People hiked in after, looking for loved ones. We soon saw animal tracks made after the ashfall, and then this empty camper, with human footprints leading to the river and then disappearing. In the days after, President Jimmy Carter came to see it for himself. Under one of the most uh, devastating natural explosions that our nation has ever known. And KGW documented the shock of it all. We weren't quite prepared for what we saw today and what we smelled today. Inside the aircraft here, a sickening stench of hydrogen sulfide. I'll try to calm the fears of the people who are staying, try to help the people who are leaving, and try to figure out what to do with all this dust. In Morton, Washington, Neil Rosenau, News 8.